ज्ञान तिमरन दस ज्ञानंजन शलाकया चक्षुरमृत ये नस्म श्री गुरवे नम गुरवे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय सदाल कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय सदभक्ताय नमो नम वाछाकूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णेभ्यो नमो नम गौर सर्चत्रामित निधि गौर सर्व सुवे गौरे न प्रति रहस्य भजनम गौर सर्व दधे गौरस्ति कृपालु रात्रि न पर गौर से भृत्य सभवा गौर गौरमचरा भगवान गौर प्रभु रक्षमा जयता सुतपंगुर मम मंद मतेर्गति मत्सर्वस्पदा भुजो श्री राधा मदन मोहन भक्तिया विहीनाय अपराध लक्ष्य क्षिप्त कामादितरंग मध्ये कृपा मयी तम शरण प्रपन्ना वृंदे नमस्ते चरणारविंदम श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवा सादि गौर भक्त वृंद ऑल टुगेदर हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वन मोर टाइम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मैं कॉजलेस मर्सी ऑफ श्री लगुरुदेव we all hearing some hari katha in different time zones in different countries we were hearing shri chaitanya charitamrit can you all hear so come close <clears throat> we were hearing shri chaitanya charitamrit and in that sequence today is a very very auspicious day very very auspicious day is ram navmi the appearance day of lord ram chandra and not only appearance of lord ram chandra but also appearance of lakshman bharat and shatrughan four of them all together and also appearance day of a great acharya in the line of shri bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur prabhupad nitilila pravesh om vishnu par stotra shat shri shrimad bhakti vallabh tirth goswami maharaj entire world is celebrating ram navmi in the form of uh, the idea of hearing and chanting this morning because now is evening in india this morning we had a program in our center shri radha madhav gaudiyamat and i spoke some hari katha some glories of lord ram in hindi taking something from there from the hindi portion and something additional to that uh let us hear some past times of lord ram our shila gurudev Shri Shrimad Bhakti Vedant Narayan Goswami Maharaj used to celebrate Ram Navmi with great enthusiasm, and when he used to speak the glories of Lord Ram, we saw he was going hours and hours. We had tears in his eyes because Ram Lila is very vast, and there are so many pathetic. scenes leelas in ram leela so i was explaining 
एकला ईश्वर कृष्ण आर सब वृत्य कृष्ण एज एक्सप्लेन इन श्रीमद भागवतम द एसेंस ऑफ ऑल स्क्रिप्चर्स भागवतम से कृष्णस्तु भगवान स्वयं एते चास कला पुंसम कृष्णस्तु भगवान स्वयं ऑल अदर आर इंकारनेशन ऑफ कृष्णा बट कृष्णा इज स्वयं भगवान स्वयं भगवान एंड आई वॉज एक्सप्लेनिंग देर आर सिक्स कैटेगरीज ऑफ अवतार इंकारनेशन मनवंतर अवतार युग अवतार पुरुष अवतार शक्तवेश अवतार गुण अवतार एंड लील अवतार एंड अमंग्स ऑल दिस लील अवतार श्री राम इज प्रोमिनेंट ब्रह्मा जी सेत इन ब्रह्म समिता रामादि मूर्तेशु कला नमे न तिष्ठान नाना अवतार अक्रोध भुवनेश किंतु कृष्णा स्वयं संवत परम अपमानियो गोविंद मादि पुरुषम तमम भगामि रामादि मूर्तेशु कला नमे न तिष्ठान ऑल इंकारनेशंस लील अवतारस हेडेड बाय श्री राम हु आर दे दे आर मैनिफेस्टेशन इंकारनेशन ऑफ कृष्णा Krishna is supreme personality of Godhead, and he is Lila Purushottam, the manifestation of many many past times in Krishna Lila. But when she Krishna, he wants to show to the entire world what is Maryadha, what is etiquette. Then he comes as Lord Ram. Then he comes as Lord Ram. So. Shrimad Bhagavatam explains oh, the glories of so many incarnations and also Shri Krishna. And Shrimad Bhagavatam have eighteen thousand verses, but in Ramayan itself there are how many twenty four thousand verses. Only the glories of Lord Ram, only incarnations of Lord. Uh, Sorry, the qualities of Ram, the pastimes of Ram, the description of Ram, twenty-four thousand verses. Imagine how much uh, it is there. So I picked some topics this morning, explaining how Lord Ram was an ideal king. Lord Ram was ideal son. Ram, ideal husband. Ram, oh, idol, brother, and also showing so much maryada and etiquette, even to his enemies, even to the servants, even to the spies. This is Ramalila. Maryada, each and every step, complete maryada, each and every step. Shri Guru Dev used to give. the history prior to lord ram there are some oh, sadness seen in dashrath maharaj dashrath maharaj who was getting so much honor not only in the 10 direction that's why his name is dashrath the glories of dashrath maharaj was spreaded in 10 directions so not only he is glorious here in this material world not only king of ayodhya but his glories were spread to 10 directions yeah. not only here but also in heaven in swarga loka where the king of all demigods indra used to give the same seat as he is sitting to lord to dashrat maharaj he used to welcome and not only dashrath maharaj there were many kings king khatwang king mujkund and dashrath maharaj so many kings so powerful on this planet that even demigods need their help to conquer demons yeah and dashrath maharaj came in the dynasty of khatwang king khatwang then in his dynasty dirga bahu then aja then ragu and then dashrath maharaj this is ragukul reet yeah. the philosophy 
the uh, the conduct of this dynasty is so glorious pran jaye par vachan na jaye they can give their lives this is the glories of their dynasty they can even give their life to keep their word that's very important so dashrath maharaj was welcomed in swarg loka sitting next to indra and indra used to give him a garland of parijat flowers which is only in swarg loka and when dashrath maharaj used to come down to planet earth in ayodhya he used to show this garland to all his queens and how many queens 360 queens the sharma rat hai 360 queens but prominent of these three queens is kaushalya sumitra and takai oh, they are prominent so ha huh, dashrath maharaj once upon a time when king indra the king of demigods indra gave him a garland and he was coming down he forgot he forgot his garland in swargloka so therefore he went back and he saw the the seat where he was sitting was getting clean by some demigods in swargloka by some sevaks seeing dashrath maharaj there they all became so nervous and dashrath maharaj asked what happened i was sitting on this seat why are you cleaning this area those sevaks became nervous and embarrassed and they said no no nothing nothing but what what bring you here again he said oh i forgot my garland here but why are you cleaning this seat i want to know this then dashrath maharaj then those sevaks said say maharaj every time when you leave we clean this area because you have no ch- child and that's why you are impure because you don't have any child you are impure and we have to clean this seat dashrath maharaj felt so bad he was totally broken and he was very sad he came to his palace in ayodhya and queens who always used to welcome him with so much uh, warm welcome and love but all these queens saw dashrath maharaj is so sad and they asking what happened what happened why are you so sad dashrath maharaj is not giving saying anything not saying anything but they come to know from him later on what actually happened so dashrath maharaj he requested vashishth guru vashishth ji gurudev can you please perform a putra yashti yagya for me and vashishth ji <clears throat> told him to bring a brahmachari who always followed brahmacharya throughout his life and it's very difficult to bring him and that is shringi rishi you brought you bring him with your tapasya austerities and if he, if he is ready to do this yagya then there is a possibility you might get a son so dashrath maharaj sat in meditation and he br- specified oh sorry he satisfied shringi rishi and he 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 became ready he was ready to come and perform yagya yagya was so successful the yagya purush bhagwan manifested from the fire and he brought the charu a pot of sweet rice and handed over to guru vashishth ji gurudev vashishth he gave this pot of sweet rice to dashrath maharaj and dashrath maharaj gave up half of the portion to mother kaushalya and half of the portion to mother kakai but three are prominent so mother kaushalya gave a portion of his portion and similarly kakai also gave a portion from his portion to mother sumitra 
three mothers became pregnant and Darshan Maharaj was very happy taking care of his wives very happy and waiting for that time the auspicious time when I'm going to see my sons and on this day Chetra Nomi in this auspicious constellation in this auspicious day and time oh, Mariada Parshottam <coughs> Shri Ram he took birth from the womb of Mother Kaushalya oh, and then similarly Lakshman and Shatrugan twins got birth from the womb of Mother Sumitra and Bharat Maharaj got birth from womb of Mother Sakai. Darshan Maharaj was not having any child and now he's having four sons. He was so happy and uh, he was dancing in ecstasy and was all the time playing with all his four children, uh, his four sons. Especially Ram has become his life and soul. Darshan Maharaj day and night singing, chanting, I mean playing with Ram, 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 day and night, only speaking Ram. Uh, become his life and soul. Ram Lila is very vast. I don't know if we are able to finish in one hour. Not possible. 24,000 shlokas. But I, why I said this? Because today appearance day of Lord Ram. So in, in summary, in brief, how the appearance took place yeah, of not only Ram, but Ram, Lakshman, Bharat and Shatrugan. Bolo Siyavar Ram Chandra Ki. Mariyada Prashottam Shri Ram. When they grew up, one day, Vishwamitraji came. One thing is seen in the pastime of Lord Ram. There was separation and some union. Shidashad Maharaj, who loves Ram so much, but once one day, Vaishishta Ji told Darshad Maharaj, your boys are now ready to go to Gurukul. And Darshad Maharaj said, no, no, no. Don't take my boys to Gurukul. Bring the teachers here and they will learn everything here. No. But the Vaishishta Ji told, no, Darshad Maharaj. The system is, a student has to go to Guru Ashram. And there he has to learn everything. Performing all menial services to Guru. Don't worry. All your four sons, they will learn so much and they will come back with many more, many learning and many arts they will learn there. They will become, they will become very strong and firm. And this is going to help in, because in future they will become the king of Ayodhya. And this uh, strong nature will help them in taking care of your subjects. Dashad Maharaj, in tears, weeping, cannot bear separation from Ram. Cannot bear. But Vaishishtaji pacified him. And in this way, <clears throat> Dashad Maharaj gave permission. So Ram, Lakshman, Bharat, Shatrugan. They dress themselves as Brahmachari. Yeah. And charity begins from home. They came to three mothers, Kaushalya, Sumitra and Kakai. They came to them and begging. Bhikshan Dehi, Bhikshan Dehi. Seeing the prince of Ayodhya in Brahmachari Vesh. Yeah dressed as brahmachari and begging with two hands. Mothers start shedding tears. They are crying. And they gave handful of rice to four of them. In this way, Sri Ram, he came to Gurukul. 
he served the lotus feet of guru vashishth ji and learned so much from him vashishth ji imparted transcendental knowledge imparted transcendental knowledge and in that knowledge shri ram learned so many divine weapons he got so many divine weapons from him and the arts to apply those weapons even though his lord his bhagwan kartam akartam anyatha kartam he can make everything possible impossible and impossible possible but the glories of ram is he never transgress the maryada never ever and his performing human like pastimes for many many multiple of reasons not one or two there are so many reasons why he did this because remember that curse four kumaras gave to jayan vijay and they became hrinyaksh and hinakashipu and also became ravan and kumkaran ravan used to meditate and worship shiva and he is very strong in his austerities so ravan pacified uh, ravan with his austerities he pleased shiva and one day shiva came mahadev came to give a boon to give a boon to ravan and ravan said i only want one boon may i become immortal mahadev said it's not possible ask any other boon then ravan said so then give me a boon that uh, no demon no rakshas no demigod no snake no animal can ever can ever kill me he listed everyone and mahadev said okay so it i give you this boon but now the boon was already over then mahadev asked ravan you mentioned everyone you didn't mention human beings ravan said if demon and de- demigod cannot do anything to me what human beings can do me i will just crush human beings like this they cannot harm me they are, they cannot be my enemies and that was a loophole Yeah, that was a loophole, and therefore, Bhagwan Ram Chandra, yeah, he never transgressed human-like pastimes, and is acting as an ordinary human being, an ordinary king, even though his shard Ashwarya Poon Bhagwan, Bhagwan with six opulences, so beautiful, full of knowledge, complete renunciation, so much opulence, ah. Uh, so much shri his beauty and fame no all six opulences present in lord ram his paravast avatar as mentioned by rupa goswami in his book lagu bhagavatam vitam paravast avatar complete opulence and also reciprocation with his devotees that's the glories of lord ram so is little is little confusing from where to start with <laughs> past time is so elaborate to from where to start and where to end in this short span so yeah, never transgress human like past time a couple of days back i was speaking to devotees here the word anukampa compassion shri jeev goswami gave a uh, definition of this word anukampa definition of the word called compassion so what is that definition he wrote he said this in <coughs> he wrote this in his sandarbhas and in sandarbhas the definition of the word compassion is anukampa cha purnasmin swasmin seva dikash sampadaka seva kadeshu सेव्य सौभाग्य संपादका भागवत आर्तमय तद उपकार इच्छा दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द वर्ड कंपैशन सो एलैबोरेट वी जस्ट सिंपली से बी कंपैशनेट टू मी 
we just simply say guru dev is very compassionate we just simply say krishna is so compassionate uh, mahaprabhu is so compassionate lord ram is so compassionate but what is the meaning of compassion that we have to understand unless we don't know the definition or the complete understanding or meaning we can't come to the conclusion what is the meaning of compassion so here compassion means anukampa cha purnasmi so with uh, this is in sanskrit but through past time of lord ram it can be very easily illustrated being purna being complete who is complete ram is complete krishna is complete tatvata all bhagavad avataras are complete shri ram is complete yeah. so anukampa cha purnasmi swasmi seva dikashu sampadaka even though he is complete he is manifesting incompleteness understand if a very high profile person say just say the president of the country no or any movie star what whoever it is high profile person he has so much opulence he has so much fame he will never say or never tell anyone i'm lacking something he always try to pose himself as he knows everything uh, but that's the difference between a merry a materialistic person and supreme lord bhagwan ram is complete no incompleteness in him yeah but he is showing of he is manifesting incompleteness that is his glory Mm-hmm. performing past times in one maryada in one in some restrictions that is his glories you see that it is glories that even though he is svatantra svatantra he is independent lord he is bhagwan but he himself created a restriction and is not transgressing those restrictions that is maryada that is his glories that make him glorious and is performing all past times in maryada not going out of maryada so even though he is complete he is manifesting incompleteness for example yeah. for example uh, sita devi got kidnapped by ravan she is in lanka under the custody of ravan and <coughs> she is staying in ashok vatika that's the garden where she was she got arrested ashok vatika ashok means no limitation no limitation but we see sita devi is lamenting there so much she is crying and weeping chanting ram 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 and on the other side bhagwan ram also feeling separation from sita calling out sita sita oh trees have you seen my sita oh creepers have you seen my sita oh earth have you seen my sita everywhere he is wandering and calling out sita 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 what's going on hmm. feeling relishing separation mood relishing vipralam bhav shri ram relishing vipralam bhav shri krishna also wants to and relishing vipralam bhav in this past times amongst all incarnations only three are so prominent that there is so much elaborate past times with the devotees with the associates Yeah, only bhagwan ram krishna and mahaprabhu and one thing common in three is they wanted to relish this vipralam bhav separation mood why 
बिकॉज अवर आचार्य श्री रूप गोस्वामी एक्सप्लेन बिना विप्रलंबेना संभोग पुष्टिम अश्नुर विदाउट सेपरेशन देर इज नो रेलिशिंग ऑफ यूनियन इन अदर वर्ड सेपरेशन मोड इनहेंस द यूनियन सेपरेशन इनहेंस द यूनियन रावण हैज हाउ डेयर कैन रावण कैन किडनेप सीता देवी शी इज स्वरूप शक्ति ऑफ लॉर्ड राम but this is a sweet desire of ram and he is taking help of yoga maya to do this because lord ram wants to feel this separation mood this vipralam bhav and he also want to make sita devi feel this so she is ashok vatika in lanka ashok means no limitation but she is in shok she is crying and weeping there what is that not shok no limitation what is that relishing vipralam bhav and as i explained two days back this vipralam bhav outwardly looks like a person is in pain and crying and weeping but inside so much yeah relishing so much bliss bhare vishe jala hoy भीतरे आनंदमय कृष्ण प्रेम अद्भुत चरित्र चेतन चेता में एक्सप्लेन भारे विषय ज्वाला हो आउटवर्डली लुक्स लाइक अ पर्सन इज बर्निंग इन सेपरेशन बट इन साइड आनंदमय ब्लिस हो इवन दो सीता देवी वॉज क्राइंग आउट साइड आउटवर्डली बट इन साइड शी इज फीलिंग that vipralam bhav ram is weeping and crying and but feeling vipralam bhav so that's why when lord ram was asking creepers trees plants flowers earth sky moon everything where is sita where is sita lakshman came to ram and he said prabhu oh, brother ram i'm little confused ram said what happened He said, "Because I'm seeing you're lamenting for Sita Devi. You're feeling separation from her, and tears flowing from your eyes. But I'm also seeing you're smiling. I'm seeing you are not sad. I'm confused to see. Either you are enjoying something, or you are in no oh, sad mood." so confusing looks like you are sad tears flowing and lamenting but also some mild smile on your face confusing for lakshman because this is what happening inside anandmay complete bliss so bhagwan ram is now collecting army of monkeys taking help of his friend sugriv and now making a bridge over ocean to go to lanka why why he need some monkeys to help why he need hanuman why he need lakshman why he need sugriv why he need vibhishan why he is bhagwan just with the movement of his eyebrows he can annihilate he can do pralay he can kill ravan huh? why he has to take so much pain and sitting in austerities to pacify the the deity of ocean please give us path we want to cross this why he is begging to ocean he is literally begging there that varun dev that ocean is the servant of his lotus feet and now lord ram is begging for him because many reasons one is establishing maryada and while establishing maryada the important point is cannot transgress human like past times bhagwan complete showing incompleteness that's compassion 
how come this compassion i'm coming to that point that lord ram who can come from eternal abode saket dham which is even beyond vaikuntha and virja if he can come from there to here can't he just cross a ocean few miles ocean he can but he is showing incompleteness complete but showing incompleteness that's compassion why showing incompleteness question why showing incompleteness <coughs> to bless and to give bliss to his associates if he always calls himself i am complete then past times cannot take place past times only can take place when a complete personality shows incompleteness so he expand his services he expand his sevas this is one category of compassion one is sorry this is second one first is complete personality showing incompleteness second point expansion of his services expansion of his services third point engaging his associates to accomplish services third engaging his associates for what reason fourth point so that they can extract bliss by serving me they can extract bliss while serving me so to give bliss to his associates he has to expand his services and he has to show i am incomplete i cannot cross the ocean understand the point yeah to give bliss to his associate that's compassion and then fifth point investing his potencies in associates to accomplish service who can serve lord who can serve bhagwan who can serve ram if the potency is not given no one can serve him we are chanting holy name we are chanting mantras we are following ekadashi we are following many tithis we are doing parikramas we am reading bhagavatam we are hearing and chanting chaitanya chaitamrit why how sorry how the potency is given by our gurudev to us if he cannot if he is not giving that potency we can't even chant one single krishna the potency is given to us now this potency varies from person to person this varies that's also very detailed subject some other time so bhagwan ram he is he is investing his potencies in the sevakas in the servants so that they can get bliss and the past time human like past time can also man- can take place can man- take place here so much involved five six points only in one word compassion that's the compassion of bhagwan ram a complete person manifesting incompleteness expanding in services giving opportunity for the so the servants to serve him and then investing his potencies and accomplishing his past times that's compassion therefore we address karuna sindhu as krishna is karuna sindhu bhagwan ram is also karuna sindhu because so much karuna is there so much compassion is there uh, so much compassion so this is anukampa so much maryada so i'm just picking few points from the not speaking in the sequence because we all know about the past times of lord ram hmm. now once upon a time vishwamitra ji came to ayodhya and vishwamitra ji he requested dashrath maharaj i'm here to ask something from you 
And Darshan Maharaj said, whatever you ask, I can give you whole kingdom. Yeah. But Vishwamitraji said, I don't want your kingdom. But you have to first take a sankalpa war. What I'm going to ask, you have to give me. They said, yes. Darshan Maharaj said, yes. I'm ready to give this promise to you. My words. Then Vishwamitraji told, I want your son Ram to come with me in the forest because I'm performing a great yagya for the benefit of masses, for the people. And I've taken a sankalpa of war and I cannot do violence because I am the priest of that yagya. I cannot do any violence. But while performing yagya, there are so many demons who are disturbing this yagya. They are throwing bones. They are throwing stool and urine. And they want to destroy this yagya. I heard a lot of about your son Ram. Allow your son to go with me and kill all these demons. Again, a separation mood. Darshan Maharaj felt, no, 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 I cannot. I cannot send Ram with you. You can take me. I'm if I, even if I'm old, I still have so much strength. Hmm? I can kill those demons. But Vishwamitra became so upset. He said, Darshan Maharaj, is, this is the words of your dynasty. You are spreading the glory of your dynasty. Huh? Is this is the way. You gave me a word. You promised me. Very good. Very good. All glories to you. And all glories to your dynasty. Darshan Maharaj was in pain. What to do? Ram is my life and soul. I cannot give my Ram. I cannot give my life. I can. Rather, I can go with you. But also I have given a promise. A vow. What shall I do? Then Vaishishaji told. Don't worry. Let Ram go with Vishwamitra. Ram will get so much learning from him. We'll learn so much from him. Don't worry at all. Allow him to go. Darshan Maharaj in pain. Felt separation. So much separation. Crying. And ordered Ram to go and assist Guru Vishwamitra. <coughs> Lakshmanji always following Ram. So Ram and Lakshman, they both entered the forest and Taraka, Taraka, who possessed the potency of 10,000 elephants, she came, big demon. And Laksh Ram and Lakshman, they're throwing arrows to Taraka. Taraka is picking all these arrows and throwing away like this. Put, lifting the complete hill and throwing on them. But then Lord Ram, he invoked divine what he got from Guru Vashishtaji. He applying those arrows and then he killed Karaka. So Vishwamitraji was performing Yajna and Marich and other demons trying to come and disturb this yagya, throwing sto stones, bones, urine, stool, blood. Yeah, want to destroy this. But Lakshman and Ram, they throwing arrows, making such a, you know, uh, a shield that all these things cannot fall in the fire. And finally, Bhagwan Ram, he shoot an arrow and kill Marij. Demons were getting killed by Ram. And in that forest, <coughs> there was one stone. And Vishwamitra asked Ram to touch this stone with your lotus feet. Sri Ram asked, what is, the, what is the matter with this stone? And Vishwamitra told the whole story that Ahilya, the chaste wife of Gautam Rishi, she broke her chastity and she got cursed by Gautam Rishi to become a stone. So the, she can only get delivered if you place your lotus feet on this stone. In very short, I'm telling. Because there are so many pastimes to speak. And 
Lord Ram, he touched that stone with his lotus feet, and Ahilya manifested from that stone. <clears throat> Ahilya paid obeisances to Lord Ram, and finally, she went to heavenly abodes. Lord Ram and Lakshman in the forest, and there in Janakpur, Sri Janak Maharaj was performing one ceremony, the marriage of her of his daughter Sita Devi. Sita Devi Janaki, the daughter of Janak Maharaj, when she was young girl, once upon a time, she lifted a bow of Shiva just with her left hand like this. That bow, which is so heavy, and hundred of people cannot even shake that bow. And Sita Devi, just in playful manner, she lifted that bow. Seeing this, Janak Maharaj and his wife, Sunaina, she they became astonished. Oh, so much powerful and strength Sita has. And that day, Janak Maharaj decided, I will marry my Sita, my daughter Sita, to a, to a king who can, who in future, able to lift this bow and can break this bow. So, in Janakpur, Janak Maharaj invited all the kings from the planet Earth. All powerful kings, very glorious kings, but full of all ego. Very, so much attitude, so much ego. They assembled in the, in the court of Sri Janak Maharaj. And the bow of Shiva was kept in between, in the middle. And Janak Maharaj, he requested. In one section, Sita Devi was sitting with her mother and with her friends in one veil. And Janak Maharaj announced, O oh, respected kings, all glories to all of you. All glories to you. You, I extended invitation. You all came here. You know the purpose. So I promise all of you, anyone who can come forward and can lift this bow of Shiva, which my darling daughter did when she was in young age, I promise I will marry my Sita to that king. Please come forward and show your strength. Everyone was so much excited. Wow, Sita is so beautiful. And everyone wanted to have Sita. Now, the kings so much uh, proud of their strength. One by one, they're coming forward and applying their strength. They're twisting their mustache. Mm, I can do this. And is coming forward. Huh. What is this bow? I have lifted so many bows in my life. What is this? Huh? It's just with left hand. And he's trying to apply his hand with left hand. Hmm, no, little heavy. I must apply the other hand. And he applied the other hand. And trying to lift the bow. Well, what to speak of lifting bow? He can't even move that bow. And he's trying all his strength and he's shaking like this. And fall on the ground. All the kings laughing on him. Ha, 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 ha. He became so embarrassed. He came back to his seat. Ha. Then he told, then other kings stood up and patting his shoulder. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I have so much strength. I can do this. Ha. What is this go? <coughs> and he came. And he said, you all are cowards. You don't know anything. I can lift this. Mm. And he came forward. And again, he, in the same manner, he trying to lift this bow, but he fell four hands back. Yeah. And his crown fell on the ground. Everyone laughed on him. Ha, 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 ha. So much showing off. All the things were... They just began this. And in the middle of this ceremony, Vishwamitra, along with Ram and Lakshman, walking bare feet, 
Ram and Lakshman wake, walking barefoot uh, in Janakpur. And that's why Janakpur Vasis, the residents of Janakpur, very proudly they say, the glories of our Janakpur is that Supreme Lord Ram. Uh, <coughs> he's walking barefoot. Because Janakpur belongs to Sita Devi. And he has to walk barefoot there. Padal chale wo. And, and when uh, and when all the residents of Janakpur they are seeing the beauty of Ram and Lakshman to great surprise. Wondering, wow, we have never seen such a beautiful prince in our life. Uh, so handsome, so effulgent, so beautiful. Everyone stuck with wonder. What is this? And Vishwamitraji came with Ram and Lakshman, entered into that palace of Janak Maharaj. The whole palace got a full gem. All eyes got stuck on Ram and Lakshman. All eyes. The rishis and munis were sitting there. The powerful kings were sitting there. The residents, honorable guests, guests were sitting there. And Janak Maharaj was sitting there. Sita Devi was sitting there. <clears throat> Lord Ram entered the into that ceremony, into that palace. And everyone saw Ram according to their own moods. As Sri Krishna, when he entered into the arena of Kamsa, so 12 rasas, there were a combination of 12 rasas there. And same thing happened when Bhagwan Ram entered into the palace of Janak Maharaj. The Rishi Muni saw Bhagwan Ram as four arm Narayan. They all paid obeisances. The kings were seeing from their own vision. Janak Maharaj saw in different vision. Sita Devi seeing Lord Ram as her beloved. Everyone seeing from their own vision. But everyone got attracted to see the beauty of Ram. Janak Maharaj stood in honor, gave a high seat to Vishwamitra and Vishwamitra ordered Ram and Lakshman to sit next to him. All the kings objected. The Janak, uh, Janak Maharaj, this is not fair. We all are sitting on our seats. Why these two princes have, prince have to sit or raise platform? This is not fair. This is partiality. And they are so young. Ram, Bhagwan Ram was only 12 years old. Imagine. Ram and Lakshman only 12 years old. And all these kings, <coughs> they are twice of their age. So this is not fair. Then Janak Maharaj replied in very sober and calm words. Right now, these two princes, they are servant of their Guru. So wherever Guru they will sit, the disciple, the servant will also sit next to them, next to him for his services. Therefore, I don't see any wrong in that. Janak Maharaj is one of the Mahajans. Bhagavatam explains, 12 Mahajans. Swambhu, Narad, Shambhu, Kumar, Kapilo, Manu, Parlad, Janaka, Bhishma, Bali, Vyasaki, Vayam. Janak Maharaj, one of the Mahajans, his decision is so intelligent knows all the Shastras, so much knowledge and renunciation. Shri Shukde Goswami went to Janak Maharaj to learn Srimad Bhagavatam. Imagine. Shri Vyasadev sent Shukde Goswami to Janak Maharaj to learn Bhagavat, Srimad Bhagavatam. Imagine how much knowledge and renunciation Shri Janak Maharaj has. <coughs> so everyone was quiet. And he said, go ahead, please come forward. Then one by one, all these kings were coming forward and trying, applying their strength. But no respect, no mariada, no etiquette. Everyone became failure. Janak Maharaj became so sad. He stood up with tears in his eyes. And he said very harsh words. Oh, you kings. Fie on you, fie on you. Shame on you. I thought you all are very powerful kings. 
I thought one of you is going to lift this bow of Shiva, but I don't. I see <coughs> the Mother Earth is bereft of all powerful kings. There is no more Kshatriya left on this planet Earth. I'm so sad, and I'm repenting. Why I took this vow that I will marry my daughter Sita to one who can lift this bow. Now I can. I am seeing uh, you all are so coward, no powerful. What will happen to my Sita? Uh, Janak Maharaj spoke harsh words. Vishwamitra ji and Bhagwan Ram. Very sober, quietly hearing this. Lakshman cannot tolerate this. Lakshman stood up in anger. Say, hey Janak Maharaj, take your words back. In this assembly, where my brother Ram is sitting, you can't speak these words. You don't know the strength of my brother Ram. What to speak of this bow? He can lift the whole universe like this. You have to take your words back. You pointed out on Kshatriyas. We are Kshatriyas. We can't, we can't tolerate these harsh words. Take your words back. And <coughs> Bhagwan Ram told Lakshman, quiet, be calm, don't be so restless. Ram is so sober, always very charming, quiet. His words are so sweet, even <coughs> sweet that anyone who comes to complain to Ram even get pacified by his appearance and by his sweet words soft spoken always smiling huh? so when ram pacified lakshman sit down lakshman don't be restless be quiet and calm lakshman sat down but with angry mood huh? and sita devi sitting far distance with her Side long glances to Ram. She's speaking through her eyes, not by words, because she can't speak there. But through her eyes, she's indicating and speaking something. Her heart uh, is the heart desires. She's speaking through her eyes and saying, Prabhu, why are you delaying so much? Why are you delaying so much? Mm. My heart is so much restless. I don't want any king to come and lift this bow. You can't understand what I'm going through. Why don't you just come and lift this bow? I know this is not difficult for you. Why don't you just come and lift this bow? And Bhagwan Ram also, with his eyes, is replying back to Sita. Mm. The loving reciprocation through eyes. Eye speaks better than words. <laughs> what words cannot express, eyes express everything. Yeah. So, Sri Ram, <coughs> he, <coughs> he replied Sita back. He said, Sita, right now I'm not independent. I'm submissive to my Gurudev. Unless my Gurudev will give order, I cannot. I cannot do anything. I'm his disciple. So, whenever my Guru, they will order me. Only then I can get up and can apply my strength. But right now, I'm not independent. No. But Sita Devi, she was worried. What's going to happen? And understanding the situation, Vishwamitruji, he stood up. All the rishis stood up. And Vishwamitra said, Ram, Get up. Now you have to go ahead and lift this bow and break this bow. Sri Ram stood up. So much Mariada. He attracted the heart of everyone only by showing his Mariada. He got up and paid obeisance to his Gurudev, first of all. Then he paid obeisances to all the rishis who were sitting there and he seek blessings from them. Then he prayed. He paid obeisance to Janak Maharaj because he's very powerful king and very knowledgeable and very renounced person. 
he got blessings from janak maharaj then he came over this bow where it was kept and he respected all the kings who were sitting there seeing his humbleness his humility all the kings got so much attracted so much attracted but many of them they were also criticizing lord ram saying oh because he is so young what he can do what we cannot do how he can do what we cannot do he is just showing off some were thinking like this but everyone was attracted to see his beauty and his humble mood then bhagwan ram came to the bow paid obeisance to lord shiva because this bow belongs to him and all the, in reciprocation uh, mahadev shiva paying obeisance to his lord his ram because mahadev is very close to ram very close to ram sakhya bhav bhagavatam says uh, and then bhagwan ram did parikrama of the bow no one has ever done this all this rituals and respect only ram and while doing his parikrama now his time to 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 express to show his strength and with his left hand he took the bow like this and string the bow and broke the bow everyone was seeing this what ramain explains just like a elephant with his trunk take out the lotus from the water without any effort bhagwan ram without any effort he just lifted the bow like this and broke the bow demigod showered flower say bolo siyavar ram chandra ki showered flowers to ram sita devi <coughs> she was so happy so happy and janak maharaj the tears of bliss ah uh, manifested from his eyes falling from his eyes the tears of bliss falling from his eyes everyone was so happy all the rishis blessing ram eh? the kings got so astonished and surprised and also glorifying ram eh? sita devi she is carrying garland in her hands coming along with her sakhis with her friends and mother so there explains charno ki gati kuch aur aur man ki gati kuch aur she is walking very slowly slowly but her her heart was running so fast she don't want to delay even a fraction of a second she was so Uh, excited to put garland on the neck of Lord Ram, but she is walking so slowly, slowly because of Maryada, because everyone is looking at her. Finally, <coughs> Sita Devi came <coughs> in front of Lord Ram, but she is so young, almost ten and a half year. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, Shri Guru Dev explains, even Krishna is so young in Gokul in ten years only, but this they are from royal families. He is the son of Nand Maharaj, the king of Nand Maharaj. Sita Devi is daughter of King Janak Maharaj. Ram is son of King Dashrath Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, therefore, even though they are young, but they look grown up. Sita Devi carry garland in her hands. and she wants to place garland on the neck of ram that's the ritual you know indian marriages that's the ritual but ram bhagwan ram is straight and tall sita devi is still short and she is waiting for the time if ram can bow his head down and i can very easily place the garland on his neck but lord ram has this bow this head only bow to my superiors only my gurujans my superior not to anyone else even if the point of marriage is there he stood straight like this and sita devi feeling so embarrassed and she is praying from her heart can't you just for a second bow your head down and i'm easy for me to place garland on your neck but lord ram is straight how to solve this 
Lakshman ji came forward and he paid flat obeisances, prostrate obeisances to Lord Ram saying, Oh, all glories to you, brother. You broke this bow of Shiva. All glories to you. And Ram said, Lakshman, what are you doing? And he bent down to lift Lakshman. So the moment he bent down, Sita Devi, she placed garland on the, on the neck of Lord Ram. Siyavara Ramachandra Ki. The marriage took place. <coughs> so much details are there. Hmm. So many details are there. Huh? And then, okay, my devotee is saying five more minutes. And also, I'm getting actually, uh, I have limited data on my mobile, which, uh, you know, I can only speak maximum hour or hour 20 minutes, not more than that. Otherwise, it will, so when it goes off, just understand my data is over for the day. <laughs> we don't have Wi Fi here, so I'm just using my mobile data. Anyway, so everything was fine. Happy moment. Instruments, conch, everyone was happy. But a big danger arrived there. Storm. And everyone was worried. <laughs> what is this storm? Everyone, all the kings looking, what is this? And who came as a storm? Parshuram. Incarnation of Bhagwan, carrying axe in his hand, in a so angry mood, ferocious mood. When he walks in anger mood, you know, it's like tornado all over. Yeah. Tornavrat everywhere, storm. When he entered in the palace of Jatak Maharaj, all the kings, <gasps> first, first. <coughs> They were not able to say anything. But this, they, they were thinking, if we don't pay obeisance to him, he will kill us. So each and every coming, everyone coming to pay obeisance to Parshuram, saying, all glories to Parshuram. My name is so-and-so. And he's throwing them like this. Hey, go away from here. Like mosquitoes. <laughs> Other coming. My obeisance to you. Hey, go from here. And he took his eggs like this. And all the kings are trembling and trembling. <gasps> Why he came here? And he came over the scene to the bow where Ram and Sita, everyone was standing. And he shouting, Who broke this bow? Who had done this? Who offended me? Huh? So much. I will punish that person. I will kill that king. Hey, Janak Maharaj, what is this nonsense? I gave this bow in your custody to look after. This bow belongs to Shiva. I pray to Shiva every day. And what you thinking this is a toy, a play game going on here? Who broke this bow? So much angry mood. Ram, very calm and quiet. I will punish that person. I will punish. But Lakshman cannot tolerate this words. He came forward. He said, oh, Rishi, you are a Rishi. You look like a sage. Anger does not suit you. Why are you so much angry mood? <laughs> Why are you so much angry mood? You are a Rishi. Rishi should not, should always be calm and quiet, not angry mood. Who are you to speak this word to me? Who are you? You don't know about me. He said, yes. It's true. I don't know anything about you because I'm seeing you first time. Hey, keep quiet. <laughs> I told you. Tell me. I told, I'm telling everyone. Who is that person? I want to kill him right away. Hmm. Lakshman said, Why are you so much angry? Because one bow is broken. You are so attached. Sages, Sadhus are not supposed to have any attachment. <coughs> they are not supposed to have any attachment. And you are attached to this bow. What is your problem? Hey, keep quiet. Oh. <laughs> <Don't speak. laughs> you think this is an ordinary bow? This bow of Lord Shiva. Lakshman said, 
in our childhood we used to broke so many bowls like this and what is no one has ever shown anger to us but you are showing so much anger you're so attached what is your problem you don't know about me i am parshuram he said you already said this five times <laughs> i already know you are parshuram we already spoke this so many times <laughs> why are you repeating this so you don't know anything about my anger i am the one who killed kshatriyas 21 times from this planet earth i am the one lakshman said one who, <coughs> one who is glorious and superior they never boast they never speak their glories from their own mouth and since you came you always speaking your glories doesn't suits to your character hey i will kill you then vishwamitra came forward hey parshuram he is lakshman he is my disciple then teach your disciple the etiquette how to speak to the superiors teach your disciple he is not well behaved behaving uh, lakshman said because you are superior you are saying you are superior i understand but you are not showing the etiquette to me to learn from you if you show your etiquette then i will understand hey keep quiet shila <laughs> gurudev when he used to see drama he used to like this conversation between parshuram and lakshman very interesting and then lord ram bhagwan ram came forward with so humble mood he said ho oh, parshuram i am your offender i am the one who offended you <coughs> i am the one who broke this bow if you want to punish you have to punish me i am ready we kings we always respect brahmins and sages you are a holy sage we are dust of your lotus feet whatever we learn is only because of you but excuse my younger brother he always takes my side this is his nature please excuse him then parshuram said elder brother showing so much humble mood and younger one always showing so much arrogance i don't understand what is this planning going on bhagwan ram said no planning my name is so small i am only ram your name is so big you are parshuram we have no comparison we are your servants of your servants so if you want to punish me you can punish me <clears throat> seeing the humble mood of ram the anger of parshuram subsided but that's a external cause chila gurudev explains the internal cause and that is shri ram is bhagwan himself and parshuram is only shakta vish avatar shakta vish avatar means when lord invest his potency in some special jiva that's that call that's called shakta vish avatar so when parshuram came in front of ram bhagwan ram took his shakti back from him understand he took his shakti back from him and then parshuram was able to understand oh he is my prabhu he is my lord he is my prabhu <coughs> and then he became calm and quiet and he paid obeisance to ram he said oh ram i have no doubt in your strength and in your talent but this is bow and arrow hmm. can you throw this bow and arrow ram said can i throw on you <laughs> so no 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 not on me in this way this conversation was over and then <clears throat> sita and ram <clears throat> they got married and many further details maybe we can continue tomorrow just one more day and there are so many uh, beautiful pastimes the marriage of lakshman bharat shatrugan and what's happening in janakpur and what's happening in ayodhya and some other further more some past times but on this day we are hearing the holy <coughs> auspicious name of bhagwan ram we heard about his glories his qualities his past times but everything is maryada 
maryada purna full of maryada we pray to the lotus feet of bhagwan ram and all his associates all the guru vargas ha oh, that please give us strength to follow also the maryada which is very important we are learning every day we learn by doing mistakes please forgive our mistakes we beg at your lotus feet bhagwan ram please bless us we can follow little a little fraction of that maryada maryada to our guru vargas maryada to our guru dev maryada to our ishta our worshipable and maryada to everyone else please bless us he maryada pushottam ram he maryada pushottam ram be compassionate to us be compassionate to us बोलो सियावर राम चंद्र की बोलो सचिन नंदन गौर हरि की श्री गुरु महाराज की श्री गुरु देव की श्री श्रीमद भक्ति वल्लभ तीर्थ गोसाई महाराज की मिताई गौर पेमानंदे हरि हरि हो थैंक यू सो मच